Hello, this video is about the principle of comparative advantage, and there's a couple of cartoons after it that I've uh, placed there. So this is uh, one, of my, one of the more interesting um, economic ideas I think about. So usually to start this off, um, I want you to, uh, it says have your neighbor check, you know, if you ran another person, you could. Um, or you could just go in your closet and take a look at all the tags. What I've uh, experienced, you know, is students often think that, uh, you know, everything's made in China and nothing's made in the United States. Um, so I challenge you to, to take a look. Um, my guess is much of your clothing is, is made in, in other parts of the world, not China. Not, that isn't to say that some of your clothing isn't made in China uh, or even the United States. But uh, it's made all kind of all over the world. So very interesting activity you can do uh, with yourself. Now, why don't people actually bother to check? Um, my assertion is that people often don't care, right? And some, some people certainly do, right? They try to buy clothing from a certain place, but uh, many people, they're looking for quality, they're looking for price, right? These aren't things that uh, that we tend to look at. So it's drawing on an, an earlier idea, <clears throat> excuse me, voluntary trade uh, can make anyone, everyone better off. So we trade our money for products like clothing, things like that, right? We don't make our own, okay? Well, so here we have something called absolute advantage. An absolute advantage is essentially whoever is the most productive or who can do something at the lowest cost. So here we've got a camping trip here, right? And this is these um, hours in the in the uh, chart here. This is the number amount of time it takes to finish the task. Okay, and I just sort of made this up. Um, and so the dad here uh, is a really good camper, right? So he can uh, catch all the fish that they need, get all the firewood, and set up the camp in, in an hour and a half. So he's the fastest at those. And then the mom, she's good at cooking. Okay, so now absolute advantage again is whoever is most uh, most productive. Okay, so the dad we would say has uh, an absolute advantage. When it comes to fishing, he has an absolute advantage. When it comes to firewood, an absolute advantage when it comes to setting up. Okay, then the mom, she can do the cooking, right? And so there's a couple problems with uh, letting whoever's most productive do the production. Okay, so the problem number one is um, it takes a long time, right? Because the dad can't be fishing and getting firewood and setting up the camp at the same time, right? Another problem is what are the brother and sister doing during this time, right? They're uh, they're not using their their labor at all. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're just sitting there. Okay, and then thirdly. When, how did the dad get good at camping? Well, he must have had some practice here, right? So uh, I want you to maybe pause the video, see if there's a, a better way. Could we get this done faster, all the tasks, in under 6.5 hours? Okay, and uh, so you absolutely could. There's a couple versions of this, but the one that, uh, uh, that, I, that I did here um, has the dad going fishing, the mom doing firewood, the brother doing setting up the camp and the sister doing cooking and so this takes advantage of something called the comparative advantage that production should be done by whoever has the lowest opportunity cost okay so when the brother and sister take on a task they give up nothing because before here they weren't doing anything right uh, and then the dad uh, the dad's just going to do one of the tasks and we get the whole thing done in three hours total okay you're probably familiar with this if you've ever worked in a group, right? Either um, some sort of group where you've got, uh, you know, a group of four students and, and you all have to get some kind of uh, finished task. So you have to finish up um, whatever it is and you all get the same grade, okay? I, I don't know how to erase with this uh, pen here. I'll figure it out at some point, but... Uh, and if I click on that, no, that doesn't work. Okay. No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, anyhow, so often what we do is, uh, you know, there's probably one A student. Whoops. There's one A student. Okay. Maybe there's more than one, but there's some student who has an absolute advantage, very productive. But you don't just let them do the whole thing. At least I hope you don't, right? What you really should do is assign tasks. We get the whole thing done uh, in less time. So we're, we're totally used to uh, something like that. So I'll let you think about. Uh, an example of this I give you my household example I'm actually not the best person uh, when it comes to cleaning certain rooms okay I, I'm pretty bad at it um, my wife's very good at it but 
uh, I do clean some things, okay, because I have a comparative advantage because I can't just let her clean the whole house. If I uh, take some of it, then even though I'm not better at it than she is, uh, we can get the whole thing done a little bit faster. And this is why, you know, kids do chores and things like that. It's comparative advantage, okay? Lots of applications. We'll get to some of those. Uh, and what happens over time is if we specialize, we can eventually get to more efficient methods of, of production. Okay, this is one of Adam Smith's insights. Uh, if you're on this kind of assembly line and your job is to put on whatever this piece is here all day long, you're going to think about that. You're going to become more efficient at it and be able to be do, do more. Okay, all right, so let's do uh, an example here. This is a uh, country of Honduras. Okay, and Honduras can produce. 100 tons of sugar or 100 tons of bananas. Okay, so that's their uh, land, labor, and capital combination. <clears throat> so they have some production possibility frontier. We'll graph that in a second. Then here's El Salvador right next door. El Salvador a little more productive. They, they can do 600 tons of sugar or 200 tons of bananas. Okay, so uh, we've got this situation. So I might ask you what who has the, oh, Cuba, oops. Uh, this should be El Salvador, sorry, typo there. It used to be Cuba, and I changed it. And I guess I didn't change it over on this slide. Um, okay, some students point out that you know, Cuba is a you know, communist country, so it's a little different. So anyway, uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, country A and country B. So anyway, who has the absolute advantage? So when it comes to producing sugar, uh, El Salvador has the absolute advantage. Okay, they're able to produce 600, whereas Honduras can produce 100. And El Salvador has the, the absolute advantage when it comes to producing bananas. Okay, and so if we were thinking about absolute advantage, then really El Salvador should do everything, and Honduras should do nothing. Right? That would be kind of silly. Or they should try to do both. And if, if Honduras tries to do both, you know, if they did half of each, then that's 50 of each. Um, they're not going to get as much out of uh, their production. They're not going to specialize. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, we, we assume we do make an assumption that there's some low transaction cost. The transaction cost is something that gets in the way of doing a transaction, right? So, who has the comparative advantage when it comes to trading? Okay, so um, this is a fancy way of saying is what's the best way to do this? Well, how can we get the most stuff, right? So, one way to look at it is we could have Honduras make all the sugar and El Salvador make all the bananas. That would give us 200 bananas and 100 sugar. And clearly, you've probably already figured out that there's an even better way to do this. You have Honduras make all the bananas, and El Salvador makes all the sugar, and then they trade what's left over because because El Salvador is very good at producing sugar. They're also good at producing bananas, but every time they produce sugar, the opportunity cost of uh, producing sugar is, is producing bananas, and every time they produce bananas, the opportunity cost is much higher here to produce sugar. Okay, So um, we can graph this too. Okay, and so if we've got a little graph here, okay, and so uh, we got 100 and 100, so we can say that this is bananas and this is sugar, okay, so this is Honduras right here, okay, we'll label that guy, and then El Salvador, uh, they can produce, so 200, 300, 400, 500, well, I'm way out there. Okay, 600 sugar, and they can also produce 200 bananas. Whoops, oh, yeah, I've done it, okay. Kind of a crooked line there, sorry about that. I need to, I wonder if I put a, well, if I put a little ruler here, can that, no, oh, that actually would work. Okay, well, I'll try that in the future. Sorry about that, okay. Um, so anyway, uh, we can see here, call this El Salvador, um, if we, we can get a lot more than if we were trying to stay somewhere here on the production possibility frontier, right? Um, and another way to do this is to graph both of them and whoever has uh, a, a, a narrower arc on their production possibility frontier has the comparative advantage. So we would say Honduras has a comparative advantage when it comes to bananas and uh, El Salvador has a comparative advantage when it comes to producing sugar. There's also a formula, okay, and the formula for uh, using figuring out the price of production, uh, which is really, again, the 
opportunity cost or the marginal opportunity cost is what we're going to think about this time. Uh, that formula is what you give up over what you get. Okay, so Honduras is easy because Honduras, if they produce sugar, they give up 100 bananas. And if they give up, um, and they get 100 sugar, right? So there's the price of sugar is one, or the one price of one sugar is one banana. And the price of one banana is one sugar. Okay, so we were looking for the lowest number here. So now for El Salvador, if they're going to produce bananas, what do they give up? Okay, so they're going to give up 600 sugar to get 200 bananas. So these zeros are cross out and I'm left with uh, three sugar equals one banana. So every time that they produce one banana they give up three sugar. Okay, That's the opportunity cost. And then vice versa uh, every time they produce um, sugar okay, it's going to be, get rid of the zeros there, it's going to be uh, one third bananas equals one sugar. Okay, so who has the lowest opportunity cost? Um, so to produce uh, bananas, their opportunity cost is three sugar, and to produce bananas, Honduras's opportunity cost is one sugar. So Honduras should absolutely uh, produce, sorry, the bananas, and then El Salvador should produce the sugar. So we, we've calculated that too. That's the third way. So just to recap here, uh, there's three ways to do it. You could say what should happen. You could graph the PPFs and look at um, look at who has the um, steeper arc. Okay, and then third, you use the formula. Well, what's going on here? Form you. How about that? Okay, and remember that formula right here is is what you give up over what you get. Okay, and that's going to give you the opportunity cost. Okay, a couple more things to think about. Okay, so sometimes you'll hear people say we should make everything in the United States. Okay, so let's think about that. If we make stuff in the United States with our land, labor, and capital. Okay, so the United States is a very large country. Okay, we have lots of natural resources. We have, you know, 330 million or so and then in the labor force you know there's maybe about 160 million I haven't looked it up in a while but it's somewhere in there okay um, our capital resources you know very strong right so we're you know very technologically sound we have an integrated marketplace we're not we're relatively not corrupt okay so we could produce tons of these things right now in, down in Honduras it's very small okay their labor force is small Okay, you know, so you know, just a couple million people, and their capital, you know, is kind of low technologically, uh, and it's it's a you know a little bit more corrupt country. It's, it's got some issues on how to produce, right? So in terms of absolute advantage, the United States should produce uh, clothing. But let's think about this with uh, opportunity cost. What is the opportunity cost of every worker in the United States producing clothing? Okay, so what do we give up when we do that? We give up. Uh, other technologically uh, difficult things, things that uh, would be harder for Honduras to do. Okay, now what does Honduras give up? Well, they give up some subsistence farming. They give up, uh, you know, some some other manufacturing, simple manufacturing, but um, but not not as much as the United States. So our opportunity cost of producing clothing, or at least the companies that do, in the United States is much uh, greater than that in Honduras. Okay, now think about this. Okay, look at that smartphone. Ha ha. Okay, and um, so in the U.S., we have the same, you know, it's the same combination of land, labor, and capital, but it'd be much easier for us to produce, uh, or at least to design an iPhone or a various types of smartphone, okay? Whereas Honduras, with their land, labor, and capital combination, that's going to be way harder. They could do it, but it'd be a lot diff more difficult, okay? So always think about uh, opportunity cost, okay? Here's another way of looking at it, comparative advantage. Here's LeBron James. He's about six foot nine. He's very fast. He could probably reach everything in his house. Should he clean his own house? And the answer is absolutely not. Every hour that he spends cleaning his house is one hour less than he can spend 
practicing basketball. So he can certainly clean his house very fast, and he's certainly wealthy, but the actual answer is he shouldn't clean his house because he should specialize in playing basketball and playing basketball really kind of only, right? Or at least until the marginal uh, cost equals the marginal benefit. Same thing with Steph Curry, right? Steph Curry knows this, and he is going to uh, uh, do the same thing, okay? He's not going to clean his house, and so there we go, okay?